Well, welcome to our community, Susie Thomas, with you this morning, and what a special treat. We have Jackie Velasquez, yes, that Jackie Velasquez, on the phone joining us. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. How are you? Doing well, and uh, hoping you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with family and friends. I did. It was like, I think we had 30 people here. Mm. So I cooked for 30 people. It was crazy, but you we had a blast. How about you guys? Um, it was wonderful. Thank you. You cooked. I'm really impressed. You know, I love to cook. It's fun. Okay. Here's, this is going to be like the theme of the day, I think, because amazing recording artist in both Christian and Latino music and, and an actress. I loved you in every movie that you've been in. And... Aww. Now an author, and now a cook. It's like people are not allowed to be good at more than one thing, Jackie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, you know what they say. You can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. <laughs> um, yeah. so. so not true. So I not like true. to dabble. <laughs> you like to dabble. Well, you dabble really well. So I'm going to fangirl out just a little bit. I'll just admit it. And so let's talk about you a little bit. I can't wait to get into your book, but let's talk a little bit about you've got quite a history, a very cool history, so young when you became so popular so quickly. What does that do really to somebody who's just really getting, really just coming up in the world and just really getting started with life. And already you were a major multi-platinum recording artist. This is going to sound strange, but what it does to you, it actually freezes time in your mind. Hmm. Um, Because my kids always, uh, I have two boys. My Mm -hmm. husband and I have two little boys at uh, 10 and 12, just turned 12. Mm. And my boys think I'm such a fun mom, okay? Mm-hmm. And, like, so kids will come over for play dates, and they go, Miss Jackie, you are so much fun. But And the reason I think I'm fun and the reason my husband always calls me his little girl is because, um, is because I started so young. So at the age I started, like, mentally, I didn't really get any older than, you know, 14. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in your so head, you're I still there. To- <laughs> yeah, I kind of got stunted mentally, like, um, uh, at 14 years old. So, like, uh, I know that sounds weird, but that's it's actually a real a thing. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes it, that happens because of, like, trauma. But but for some people, that happens just because they, um, uh, just, it, it was not a tra- trauma, traumatic experience. It was just more like a, a life-changing experience. Mm-hmm. Like everything altered at one moment, at one age. So it kind of freezes time for you. Mm. Does that make sense? It kind of does, right. because it, when something so big happens so soon, yeah, that would be just hard to hard to move on, I would think. Yeah, I don't know if it's, that, it's moving on. It's just that you kind of just kind of kind of stay there. Like you're like mm-hmm. mental, like at, in that age, not not mentally, but at that age, you kind of stay there. Mm-hmm. Kind of um, forever, kind of 16 years old kind of thing. So, um, and my kids love it because I took them to an escape room the other day over Thanksgiving break. They're like, Mom, you're going to come with us, right? Right. You're going to come with us to the escape room. I was like, yeah, of course I'm going. I'm yes. Going. They have like, play bag. we're doing this. And like, you know, all my friends are like, are you really doing the escape room? That really makes me nervous. I'm going, oh, yes, yeah, I'm doing the escape Oh, room. yeah. Oh, it's great. Well, I've got to know. Did you escape? Did you get out in time? No. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> We did not. I'm I sorry. Was crying. And I was like yelling at the boys, like, we should come over here. Hurry. They're like, Mom, chill out. I'm like, no, we got to see the room. <laughs> <laughs> but those are a really fun way to spend time together. And, you know, oh, I, so much fun. and really for teamwork, you know, as a family, it's a great family thing to do. Very fun. Oh, it is. It's, it's super fun. I mean, it's like, it's like, a, well, you know, it's a mystery. And who doesn't love a good mystery? Yeah. And it's something you have to use your head. You have to think outside the box. It's so good for kids, you know, you know, depending on the age of kids. But, you know, like for my 10 year old, it was good for him to get thinking. And then, like, there's a lot of math involved too. That mm-hmm. depending on the, you know, depending on what you do. But we did, um, I think we did the United States of America. Anyway, so um, so fun. There was math involved, and so that was really good for the boys and for me too. Very cool. Oh, you know, I think people will love to know that Jackie Velasquez does escape rooms with her boys. I I just think that's a fun yeah. thing to discover today. <laughs> 
Thank you. Well, I thought I thought it was fun. We enjoyed it for sure. Well, when we get to your music, let's start with music. And that had to be, it's a tough industry to break into, but you didn't experience that. And very, very young. Were you, what, 16? You, I mean, it was very young. And it was a very welcoming and an encouraging kind of an industry to you. Can you touch on that a little bit? Um, well, you know, I started traveling with my parents when I was nine years old. Oh, so well, I started singing right. and traveling from from a very young age. So with that, um, with that, I uh, with that, I think that I I I had started much much earlier than when that first record came out because I had done um, custom projects with my parents prior to that um, to that you know release of Heavenly Place. Mm-hmm. So, um, so when Heavenly Place came out, that was in 96. And so I signed with um, the label when I was 14. Mm. So it took a couple of years of artist development of recording the, the project before it came out. So, um, yeah, so 16. Yeah, that was a, that was a wild time. Mm. Um, I think that. Uh, I was really grateful that I had parents that were willing to move to Nashville because we moved to Nashville when I was 14 after the, after wow. we signed the deal. Wow. And so just have been um, making music ever since. Then the second record came out in 98. And then I um, I signed uh, with Sony Discos after that for the Spanish side of things. Hmm. Yes. So that yes. Was fun. Very fun. And it's all been so good. How do you keep fresh as far as you know expectations are always so big you you come out strong and then expectations are so big how do you keep things fresh not just with your music but also just with your faith Jackie to have time to just get alone with God and and do all those things that are expected of you and then yeah expected to be really done well and you know what's funny to me and I think it, it uh, do you have kids I have two boys, so I'm relating to you yes. so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any, I think any time a woman uh, gets married and has kids, really time slips away mm-hmm. because it's so difficult to find time. Even like when you are not busy because you have to be somewhere, you should be getting laundry done. You know what I mean? Right. Even though, even though I'm not doing laundry, oh my goodness, I... I, I gotta get this kitchen clean before my husband comes home. Um, you know, it's, there's always something to get done. It is very difficult to um, to make that time for the Lord, and it, but but it's so necessary, and it really does have to be intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that for me personally, um, I wake up. Uh, my husband and I both wake up before the kids. We wake up. We try to wake up like an hour before our kids are going to wake up to have to get ready, you know, to get them ready for school and stuff. Just to have that time to, um, just for me to, to read my Bible, to ask God to show me what he, what he has in store, what he wants to show me that day. Um, it, I, I know that I need each day we need to have our daily bread because throughout the day we are going to be pouring and pouring out. Mm-hmm. So we don't have daily bread and we're not full, we're not satisfied we are gonna we're gonna be empty, and we're not gonna have anything left to give when somebody possibly needs that um, needs needs to hear about Jesus or needs that special friendship moment where you just go, that was exactly what I needed to hear today. Thank you for saying that. And if mm-hmm. we don't, so we we need to constantly be filling ourselves up, and also not beat ourselves up when we just ran out of time in a day. Because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, um, but we have to continuously have a be um, intentional and in trying and 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 keeping that at the top of our mind. Hmm. That is really good, and I know that's a word for somebody right now. Very curious of with everything else, how you found time to also write a book. <laughs> when did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was hard. Um, I I had to take weeks off of like life, basically. Mm-hmm. I was like, my husband said, baby, don't worry about the house. Don't worry about the kids. Don't worry about the laundry. Don't 
just right. Nice. And so I would just, um, I would either go into the studio and write, or I would, or I would sit in my bed and I would just sit there and write, uh, you know, on the laptop. And then, um, or I would go to a coffee house and put my Bose headphones on and write. But um, it, it, it was a, you know, the, the book is actually, you know, 40 years in the making. Mm. But, um, and people keep calling it a memoir, but it's not a memoir. It's actually a collection of stories um, from my life, but always leading back to the biblical truth. Um, there are so many, when you read throughout the Bible, there are so many different people uh, who, you know, Bible characters that are not just characters, but were real people that God had to change the trajectory of their lives because his plan, he had a plan for them, things that they could have never even imagined. I mean, mm-hmm. Esther, she was born, uh, she's an orphan, Hadaja, she was adopted by her uncle, was her uncle or cousin, I forget right now, mm-hmm. and she, and they and they were Jewish, and all of a sudden the king of Persia, Xerxes, he is <laughs> looking for a new wife. How in the world could she have ever imagined that this little Jewish orphan girl was going to become the queen of Persia and yeah. bend the ear of the most powerful man yeah. on the, you know, on that, on the planet that, that time. Um, but, but that's what God had in store for her. And a lot of times God will, um, what I've seen is we have these concepts and we have these dreams of what we think we should be doing, what our vision is. And a lot of times we confuse our dreams and our vision with God's calling. That's what I really want to, I mean? yes, and that's where I want to go. How can we tell the difference? I know the Bible says man directs his, you know, man plans his plans, makes his plans. God directs his steps. How yes. do we know when, like a new opportunity, a new door opens? How do we know is this Holy Spirit led, or is this just me saying, "Oh, here's something fun"? I truly believe we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter. Mm-hmm. And when, whenever we're making a decision and whenever we see, you know, uh, the next step, what, what, what we, are we supposed to take the step? Am I supposed to take, must, is this what you have in store for me, Lord? If you do not feel a peace, mm-hmm. then trust that the Holy Spirit is not giving you that peace for that tr- choice. And be okay with it. A lot of times walking in obedience... 98% of the time, we don't like what we're going to have to do. Hmm. But, but if we have a peace about what we don't necessarily want to do, but we have a peace because we know that we're seeking God and we're asking Him for His guidance, for His will, that's more important than what I want, my dreams, my plans, um, then, we can, um, then we, can, we can truly trust and know that that peace, if we keep asking for it, if it's not there, then that's not the right direction. I can't tell you how many times in my life I made poor choices, such bad mistakes. Well, we're all in that club. I cannot tell you how many times and how many poor choices I have made in my life, all the way down to making a mistake, um, thinking, well, this is my dream. This is my dream. This has to be what God wants me to do because this is my dream. Yes, but he does know the desires of our heart, but we have to walk in with his will and his obedience because mm-hmm. that's the perfect plan. And so I, when I was 21, I decided I wanted, I, I got a, an audition for a film. I landed the part. I wanted to do this movie and people around me were telling me no. And I was like, you guys are all wrong. This mm-hmm. is what I'm supposed to be doing because this is what God has called me to do. This is my dream. But there was a whole lot of me in my dream and not a whole lot of God in my dream. Mm-hmm. So at those, in those moments, we can either go, oh, okay, that was a mistake. God, what are you trying to show me? What, what ca- how can I be taught? What are you going to teach me through this? Or you can do like I did and try to DIY your own mistake by making another mistake. <laughs> yes, um, I've done so, that as well. <laughs> yes. So the thing is, it, 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 it's being willing to listen yes. for his interpretation of what you think you should be doing. And not confusing with his will with what your dreams are. Mm. Oh, that's good. And that is a good place to pause right now. We are speaking with Jackie Velasquez. We're going to be back when God rescripts your life. After these words, you're listening to our community.